Hey Warriors, it's Victoria coming to talk to you about goal setting for the new year, 2022. Hope you're having a good new year so far. And I really want to encourage you to start making some goals for your recovery if you haven't already. And I want to talk a little bit about how to do that because goals have been very powerful for me throughout my recovery. However, if I had gone about them in the same way that I did when I was healthy, they would not be useful at all. And they actually were just overwhelming and made me crash. So here's to a new way to set goals. I'm sure you've heard of SMART goals and I agree with them. I think that they're, you know, a fine way to go about goals. So those are being, it's an acronym for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-based. And so I'd say that your goals can be all of that, but I want to give you a new acronym to focus on. So the first would be sensory-based. Make your goals sensory-based. Your How's it going to look? How's it going to feel? How's it going to sound? How's it going to taste when you reach this goal? And then when you write it, you put it in a statement, use, putting those things into it. The second thing would be manageable. So when you've got chronic fatigue syndrome, you can't be making these grandiose goals. Now you can you can write them down and have fun with dreaming about that, but you wanna make them manageable and within your capacity and your baseline. So otherwise they just start to work against you. So I found that small incremental goals, things that I had never set before because you would never think about setting them, like being able to go to the coffee shop with a friend, that was a huge goal for me. Never would have been one before because that was just taken for granted, right? The next one would be attainable. Again, similar to manageable. You want it to be something that you'll be able to reach within, you know, say six weeks to two months. So you don't want to set these real long reaching goals. I found short term goals were much better for me. And that helped me sustain motivation. And then that way I could update them every couple of months on where I was. And then the next thing is you want to be rest based. So instead of relevant, which is the other one, you want to be rest based, which means you take into consideration the rest and the recovery time that you're going to need for those goals when you set those goals out. And even including that in your statement can be very helpful. The last thing would be time flexible. And this is really key. You know, when we put a time date on our goals, it can really put the foot in our back and put pressure on us, which actually can result in more heightened stress and uh, fatigue. So what you want to do is have time flexible goals. So if you don't reach them, there's no self-condemnation. Like let's say that you've made it up to a seven minute walk in, in, on most days, but your goal was a 10 minute walk every day. Well, you know, you're going to give yourself flexibility and you're going to be kind and compassionate with yourself. So this came up because I was talking with my son. He's been reading Atomic Habits, which is about creating habits that are really going to serve you. And he was saying, like, for instance, he was going to start going to the gym a few times a week. So rather than going to the gym and doing these really hard workouts three times every week, which a lot of people do when they're starting with that, he said, I would just set the context for it. I would go in mess around a little bit in the gym, and then leave. I'm just focusing on creating the time and the context for that. Then he would come back and do it again and just kind of enjoy his time there, do a few different, you know, weights, and then leave. And so he was building the context for his weightlifting. And so I think that's a really good way to go about it where you focus more on you're just setting up these habits in your recovery. And then once those habits are established, you can begin setting things that, you know, cause you to stretch a little bit more. So I just want to encourage you and challenge you to set some goals for this year. And I would encourage you to do, I've written a little list here, I would encourage you to do one movement-based goal, a uh, calm your system-based goal, a connection-based goal, and a creative-based goal. And so what that might look like, I want to just give you some quick samples. Like for me, when I started, it was like, I want to do a 10 minute walk. And I started with a three minute walk. And so during the whole year, I built up to that 10 minutes by, you know, working with my goals and then updating them. Um, but for this, so I put down, 
I enjoy walking 10 minutes a day, feeling good while listening to an inspired audio with corresponding rest time. You can obviously 10 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, whatever was with in your capacity. You don't want to be working at 100% capacity when you go for a walk. With chronic fatigue syndrome, you always want to back it up and do less than your maximum capacity, maybe 70, 75%, so you have those energy reserves still in place and it's more restorative movement. The next one for a calming your system-based goal could be something like, I enjoy alternate nostril breathing every morning lying in bed upon waking while listening to uplifting music. And I used to do that with a track called Rain and it had rain in it and it had beautiful instrumental music and I loved it and I did that every morning and it began to calm my system down. Once you establish that habit, you could begin adding in other things that you say, okay, I wanna do a 20 minute meditation in the afternoon and then you just approach it in that way. The next one would be a connection based. Uh, I enjoy pleasant conversation with a friend over a delicious cup of coffee in a quiet coffee shop with rest planned afterwards. So you can see we're incorporating that sensory based language and we're making it manageable. So when you're able to get out and do that, you start with a short amount of time um, and that can make it more attainable. You don't go for an hour. If you haven't been doing this, maybe you go for 20 minutes or maybe you go on your own the first time. That's what I did. And then you incorporate, you've uh, written that you're going to have corresponding rest time afterwards with planned rest time and keeping it time flexible. So really, you know, you just want to kind of set a time on this, like for two months. When do you think we'll be able to do that once in two months? Will you be able to do it more than that? So just kind of incorporate, I like to put a little date on there and then you're gonna keep, just keep it on little, I kept mine on little note cards and then you can easily update them after six to eight weeks. The last one was creative base that I did. It was, I enjoy one hour of uh, easy creative activity weekly one which fulfills me and moves me forward by creating a healing state. So this is not about putting pressure on yourself to get creative. It's simply about giving yourself a time slot to uh, begin to create, whether that might be drawing in a coloring notebook if you're bed bound, or, you know, the funny thing is this is where my CFS Warriors started because I, I wanted to be creative and I thought, well, I could, you know, I could make a Facebook page and put up some encouraging quotes once a week, you know? And so it is really interesting to see where these goals can take you. But as you can imagine, and as you can see, it's very different from before you have chronic fatigue syndrome. But I believe that these new SMART goals can serve you better because they're giving you flexibility. They're giving you the ability to imagine yourself having completed it by using the sensory language. And then with time flexibility, it just takes the pressure off and you know you're gonna get there. You're just giving yourself flexibility for when you need more rest time or when other things are going on in your life. One more little PS on a goal that you could make that I really enjoyed this year was a state-based goal. And so what that means is the kind of state that you want to be in throughout the day. And so a relaxed state, a cheerful state, it could be any number of those things. And I just really enjoyed it because it made me more aware of what kind of state I was in. And so if I wasn't relaxed, it would remind me, oh, I can do this and this to get relaxed. I need to go take a breath. I need to go stretch. I need to go for a walk. You know, that was a little reminder for me to stay in those states because our lives are made up of states. And it, why not enjoy good states? And I know when you have symptoms, it's very challenging. But if you can, uh, maybe the first state to be in would be relaxed because that's going to help your recovery by creating all those good hormones in your body and good healing chemicals. Um, so I enjoy being in a relaxed state throughout the day, listening to music, finding inspiring stories to watch. And another thing I like about the state-based goals is that it's really about, uh, it's not about achievement. You know, the Achiever Beast was really high on my list pre-CFS and during my recovery. That Achiever Beast can get the best of you sometimes and work against your recovery. So it was a whole new thing for me to just start thinking of, 
how do I want to live? Like, what state do I want to be in most of the time? So anyway, you know, I remember in the early days of CFS, in the dark early days, I thought, you know what? CFS strips away your doing to reveal your being. And that was very powerful to recognize that. So I think that it's such a valuable lesson to come out of the illness with that and to recognize that what are we being? In what state are we being? So hope that will encourage you to add that to your goal list. Again, goal setting has been huge for me in recovery, but not the typical type of goal setting and not the kind I used to do. Now that I'm so much better, I'm able to enjoy a little bit more grandiose goals, but also the, this has served me well, teaching me how to you know make incremental goals that are really much more manageable and easy to reach. So I hope that helps. Remember, life's not over. It's starting again. And I speak life, health, and wholeness over you. Be sure to check out my library of content on this channel for more inspiration and information and recovery. And if you enjoy the content, be sure to subscribe. Thanks.